Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on the Growing Wisconsin Readers Fall Webinar Series. Today's webinar is a partnership spotlight, looking at what's happening in Rock County, Wisconsin. So thank you for being here, whether it's live or you're watching recording. We're so glad that you are interested in early literacy community partnerships. I will be serving as your webinar facilitator. My name is Tessa Michelson-Schmidt, and I work as the Public Library Youth and Special Services Consultant for the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction. In my position here at DPI, I serve as the coordinator of the Growing Wisconsin Readers Statewide Early Literacy Initiative. For those of you who are maybe not that familiar with Growing Wisconsin Readers, especially if you're joining us today from outside of the public library world, Growing Wisconsin Readers is a statewide initiative that's rooted in Wisconsin public libraries. And it's focused on supporting caregivers of young children with information about early literacy. So they can prepare children for learning at school and beyond. And I think today, in particular, we're going to see how many people in one community can come together to further this message. So in particular, we will be doing a partnership spotlight on Rock County, Wisconsin, which is in the southern part of our state. And we're going to look at and hear about how they've networked and collaborated and communicate with each other, both in the library, but certainly all around town. So we're going to find out how that gets started, what works, what's difficult, and how to keep things going. The people who will be joining us for this webinar are all joined together in one room today. And uh, so we will be able to pa pass the microphone quite easily. And our webinar presenters are joining us from the Hedberg Public Library. And Sharon Grover is representing the Hedberg Public Library, as well as the Arrowhead Library System. Arrowhead is um, the library system for all of Rock County. We also have Connie Rovers, Angela Lynch, Sue Stein, and Dr. Sally McCoy. And you can see their roles within the Rock County community on the screen as well. And so without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Sharon Grover, who will start us off and introduce the rest of the folks in the room, well, in her room. Thanks. Thank you, Tessa. As Tessa said, today I am wearing two hats, one as head of youth services at Hedberg Public Library, but also, and perhaps more importantly, as Youth Services Liaison for the Arrowhead Library Services. In May of 2013, Connie Rovers from Head Start gathered many of us together in a room around six tables and asked us to talk about issues facing families with young children. Every table talked about the need for school readiness, as well as other many health-related issues that face these families. Um, things like finding affordable dental care, finding mental health care, um, where to go to the doctor if you didn't have health insurance. All of these things were very important to the participants at that meeting. And yet, every single table mentioned as a strategic issue for the group of us, school readiness. As I sat there thinking about it, I realized that librarians know a lot about early literacy and maybe not so much about finding dental care and that we could help with a countywide grant for early literacy. I knew that the Department of Public Instruction had set aside money for specifically for that, and it seemed like a good response to this need. Out of this grant process was born the Rock County Thousand Books Before Kindergarten. We call it Growing Rock County Readers. And we based it on a way to collaborate together, not just the libraries and the librarians, although that's certainly a part of it, 
we're all trying to learn how to work together more efficiently and effectively. But we also wanted to work together with agencies and organizations in Rock County that would help us to reach the targeted audience, which as all librarians know is not necessarily the audience that we see every day in our library. So we applied for the grant and we got it. And today, as Tessa also said, several of the partners are here at Hedberg Public Library to talk about how we have come to work together. Training and communication were a big part of the grant. And so to kick off, we gathered librarians and community partners preschool administrators and teachers, Head Start staff, WIC staff, representatives from the mental health community for a three-hour workshop to talk about the importance of increasing early literacy in Rock County. Our keynote speaker was the amazing Dr. Depeche Navsaria, who laid the groundwork for imperative reasons for us all to work together. He urged us to break out of our silos to be more effective at raising literacy rates in Rock County. Following Dr. Navsaria's speech, we had table talk discussions that focused on next steps for us to do in working together and how we might overcome obst obstacles to our working together. Out of this communication and workshops, came a listserv that we hope will allow us to continue the conversation. A Thousand Books has been really lucky to have launched with some great programs. Jamie Swenson, who is a picture book author who just happens to work at Hedberg Public Library, um, had a new book coming out this September that was illustrated by Chris Roshka, a two-time Caldecott winner. And one of the things that we had put into the grant was that every child who finished reading a thousand books would be given a hardcover book of their own to keep. What could be better than having Jamie's book? She lives in Rock County. She embodies this message of early literacy. And we were lucky enough to get Chris Roshka to come and visit as well for the launch party. As you can see on the bottom right hand picture, we had three children who had finished reading a thousand books, actually before the book even was published. And they patiently waited and got their book from Jamie and Chris at the launch party, and they were the first in line to have it signed. And up right above that picture is Daddy reading to two of the little girls. We also were lucky to have Jose Luis Orozco come to visit. He is a, um, a noted music educator, and he talked about the importance of singing and reading and how they go together, and we sang, and we danced, and kids learned more about early literacy. The message for all of this you can see right on the faces of those two little children in the middle. Reading is fun, and that's what we're trying to show our families, that not only is this important, it's really a fun thing to do with your children. It calms them down. It calms you down, and it just promotes a good time. And by the way, that little guy on the bottom belongs to one of today's participants <laughs> in today's webinar. So I'm sure she's very happy to see him, aren't you, Martha Gammon? <laughs> We'd like to know what's happening in your community. Those of us who are doing this webinar today have now been talking about how to work with other partners for quite a while. And we'd like to know what you're doing in your 
community. Tessa explained a little bit about how to take the poll, but if you look under your name at the top, you'll see four little boxes, and in the right-hand box, there's an A. And if you click on that right-hand box, you'll be able to answer our questions. A, maybe you partner with your school district. B, maybe you partner with Head Start and other preschool providers. C, perhaps you're partnering with local health care agencies. Maybe you're part of the Reach Out and Read program. D, who maybe you're doing all of the above. Or E, you're still looking for community partners. So if you would please take a moment and fill that out, Tessa will be able to tell us what the results of our poll are. Tessa, can you tell us what the poll said? Sure, it seems that people are still taking it, so if we just wait another minute, sometimes um, there can be a little bit of a delay, and so let's just wait one more moment. Again, um, you should see your name in the participants box, it should be in bold, and then there are four square boxes beneath your name, and if you find the one with the A in it, you can click that and then make your choice for A, B, C, D, or E. Mm -hmm. Right now we've only had a, a couple of people do the poll. Um, so I'll just uh, wait one more moment and then we'll publish the results. So there you go, Sharon. You should be able to see the poll results. Oh, thank you. Wow, it looks like we have a lot of all of the above, so that's pretty great that everybody's working on these partnerships together because really libraries alone can't do it and agencies alone can't do it. We all need to be working together. Now I'd like to introduce Connie Robers, Executive Director of Brock Walworth Comprehensive Family Services Incorporated, and that is our local Head Start and Early Head Start. And Connie was the person whose vision really inspired the writing of the Thousand Books Before Kindergarten grant, and she'll tell you all about how she views community collaboration. Welcome, Connie. Thank you, Sharon, very much, and I appreciate your acknowledging or saying that I was the inspiration, but I think that you are the inspiration. And I'm hoping that we can um, share a little bit more about that event in just a couple of minutes. Um, I uh, really also very am very thankful for being included today. Um, boy, collaboration anymore is the only way to accomplish our goals. And so we're enjoying learning with all of you and also sharing some of the challenges in our communities and becoming problem solvers together. Um, our Head Start program serves Rock and Walworth County and still this one. Thank you. Um, our Head Start program serves 488 children in Rock and Walworth County and we work with families and young children whose income is at or below the federal poverty level as you all probably know. We also work with children from the prenatal period to age five and their parents and guardians. So we're a two-generation program, really. Um, Head Start's main purpose is to promote young children's readiness for school success. Head Start and public libraries, as well as many other child and family serving folks in our communities, are pretty natural local partners in the campaign to provide strong foundations for children's literacy development. So um, it was good to see that some of you who are participating were able to indicate that you are already working with others in your community, including either Head Start or Child Care, because uh, we need you so desperately, um, and we need to learn with you and from you. So thank you very much for indicating that.
Um, it not only makes natural sense for Head Start to collaborate with public libraries and other community partners, but it's also a requirement. Um, it's promoted by the federal government, which is our funding source, as you probably know. Um, Head Start's programs must comply with federal legislation that authorizes their grant funding. So that means that collaboration is a requirement for us. This slide shows two small excerpts from the Head Start Act of 2007. That was our most recent reauthorization for Head Starts across the country. Um, the first entry there requires that Head Start programs offer family literacy services and parenting skills training, either directly or through referral to other community organizations. And we know that our public libraries are wonderful, wonderful sources of family literacy services and parenting skills training. So I think we quite frequently refer folks in your direction. And that is so important to us because they are welcomed in their libraries and they learn there with their children and encourage their children's learning. The second excerpt guides Head Start programs to work with local libraries to improve school readiness. As Sharon mentioned earlier, school readiness is what we, many of us are about. Many of us have a great deal of concern around school readiness. So it seems like we parallel in our missions in many ways across the community. So Head Start is very interested in collaborating and I hope that either if you are in a community where there's a Head Start that they have reached out to you already um, and I'm guessing that they may have done so. I wanted to share a little bit about some of the shared values that I think that we probably have around early literacy and family literacy. Um, one of the things to share with you all is that Head Start, in addition to the requirements of the Head Start Reauthorization Act, we also have a couple of thousand, two, I think it's 2,000 performance standards that we as a Head Start, early Head Start program must meet. And those, in many ways, focus on the learning goals that we have in our communities for young children. And so you will see that we really do believe that literacy is a foundation for school readiness and that literacy begins with the family in the home. But literacy is connected to all domains of development, whether it's social emotional, whether it's physical development, whether it's children's health, whether it's their language development. All of those pieces are interconnected and literacy is involved with all of those activities and that we must all work together to play a part in the early literacy learning that goals that we have for our children. Um, so Head Start is very interested in collaborating with parents, schools, the child care communities, community, their libraries, and others in the community to make sure that these goals are met. None of us can do this by ourselves. If you've worked with Head Start a little bit, I'm sure that you know that one of our primary partnerships that we rely upon and that we work very hard to develop and maintain is our partnership with parents. Um, parents we know and we all uh, may, may agree are the children's first and most important teachers. Head Start works proactively with parents to encourage their children to, or excuse, excuse me, to encourage parents to take an active role in talking, reading, singing, and playing with their children, modeling for their children how much the parents value learning. We work hard to bring parents to the classroom, and equally, if not more important, we promote learning opportunities in the home led by parents. And we talk a lot with parents about the importance of their literacy activities in their home and in the, our centers that really encourage and inspire their children to love books and love reading.
The importance of early literacy learning is a common message that we share with one another across our community, across our families, across our schools, and across everything that we do. Um, when we communicate these messages with a shared voice that comes from many perspectives, we believe that our imp impact is much stronger. We value our many partnerships in this huge effort. And some examples of partners include, and I know that Sharon has mentioned these earlier, but the school district staff who bring resources and strategies to our teachers, to our classrooms, to our children, to our families, to the community as a whole. Other community groups, and we have um, service groups such as Rock County Bookworms, and these are retired teachers primarily who provide literacy activities to groups of children and give books to the children to take home and have in their home libraries. It's a pretty powerful message that the community cares about children's literacy. Um, community businesses contribute to this effort. I want to acknowledge certainly Ecolab here in our state line area is an amazing company that contributes funding so that the children may receive books of their own during the year and actually may select books of their own that they can share with their families and take home. Each child gets three books and they're high quality books and we work with folks in the community to identify what would be the most interesting best quality books to share with our children but also we give the children the opportunity to choose. We think, think that's an important piece of their activity around literacy is picking out books that are important to them. I'm sorry for all of the words on this page. Um, I was, thought that I would compile sort of a list here of some of the ways that we currently partner with our local libraries across Rock and Walworth County. And um, we have many, many, many activities that may focus on children, may focus on parents, family units, and staff. So there are a lot of wonderful opportunities to collaborate. And this is a list of some of those things we hope and we try very hard with our libraries to have it be a two-way win situation or a many-way win-win situation because we really want to serve our libraries as well. And we want to be able to provide encouragement to our families for library patronage, um, guidance for children on library usage and how to, how to be a good library customer. Um, awareness, we, we talk a lot about awareness of community needs. We talk about um, ways that we can share resources. We talk about website, media linkages, Lots and lots of ways that we can connect around our partnerships. And these partnerships are formal. They're written down and they're shared, um, signed by library staff and by Head Start staff. And um, we update them as the years go by to make sure that we're not missing our opportunities. Well, Thousand Books Before Kindergarten has been so successful within our Head Start and Early Head Start program. We've been delighted to promote this initiative with all of our Rock County families. The children love their experiences with books and they love the nurturing moments that they experience with their parents through the story time um, activities. I think the parents are benefiting greatly as well from this wonderful initiative. Many of our parents are not natural readers, but they are discovering the joy of reading now through their children and delighting in these activities. And the, we pictured a young family here that we're very proud of. This is a great example. This family back in June embraced the 1000 Books initiative and their little guy was four months old, I think, about at that time, four or five months old. He's now 10 months old. And by October, by the early part of October, mom had, and dad had read 
over 500 books to this little guy. And it was, um, they're very proud to share that information. And they're, they're enjoying visiting their local library. And um, this is a new experience for them. So yay, 1,000 books has brought this family to the library. So we thank you for that. Kind of shifting gears a little bit, I wanted to go back and talk a little bit about the opportunities we've had to bring folks together to consider issues in our community around children's learning and children and family needs. Um, we, back in 2013, created a community of practice approach, um, thought that Gathering folks together under a theme of partnering for success, supporting families and young children, developing a community of practice, was a way to share some of the challenges that we were all experiencing and share wisdom across perspectives. So we started at that time the idea of having topics that we all felt were important and bringing people to, together to discuss them. Um, I really appreciated the participation of Arrowhead Library folks. Sharon Grover was there. Um, I really participated school district participation, health, um, community health services participation, participation from our Exchange Family Resource Center, from mental health providers, from a whole variety of folks across Rock County. And um, we felt that this was an interesting opportunity to come together, and I think there were at least 30 of us present, um, to share perspectives. Um, we connected, and we were able to address some interesting linkages opportunities, and able to find some many, many commonalities that we found that were challenging us all. So we've had a couple of events, um, widely spaced, but we still intend to keep on going with this idea. Um, the spring 2013 event started out with a focus on Wisconsin's Early Learning Challenge Grant and the crosswalking of Wisconsin's model early learning standards with the core competencies. And, and, uh, and this, is, this was an interesting um, opportunity to look at our work from a, from a statewide perspective. Um, so we, we did also have the opportunity to sit down at the table with one another and address a variety of pithy little questions and, and concerns that were, um, we were able to really brainstorm around. And so we learned a lot from each other that day. And I'm glad that Sharon was inspired to think about applying for um, funding to bring more opportunities for learning together to our community. And that, that's been incredible. So the result of that, or one of the results, was the fall 2014 event, Growing Rock County Readers Collaborative Workshop with Depeche, Dr. Depeche Nasaria, and the follow-up activities to that, which um, allowed us once again to co converse around issues of shared concern. I guess from my perspective, um, I think of these as roundtable cafe discussions. Um, here in Head Start, we have an approach that we use often. It's called the parent cafe or the parent mini cafe. And some of you may know this from supporting families together work. This has been a sort of a growing trend across the state to bring folks together in small discussion groups and present some interesting questions, and the participants share their experiences around the topic, what they've learned, what they know, what they're worried about, what they think is important. It's pretty organic. Folks um, use this approach in many different ways in our communities. Certainly, we use it at our family events. It breaks down barriers and reveals common threads. We found it to be really effective in building networking and connections around shared issues, whether it's parents or community partners. So um, we strongly encourage folks to consider this as an approach 
if you're bringing folks from your community together to um, kind of find common core issues and ideas. So that's the end of my um, slides, and I thank you very much for your good attention and, and turn it back to Sharon. Thank you very much, Connie. Now I'd like to introduce Angela Lynch. Angela heads up the four-year-old kindergarten program for the Janesville schools. It's called P4J, Preschool for Janesville. Over the past five years, P4J and the Hedberg Public Library have developed a very close working relationship. From a public library standpoint, we are grateful for these excellent partners who have taught us a great deal about how preschool children learn. Now I'll turn it over to Angela so she can talk about what the partnership means to the P4J program. Hello, uh, this is Angela Lynch, and I am the P4J coordinator. It is our four-year-old kindergarten program in Janesville. We actually have 20 uh, P4J sites around the community. 15 of them are community-based, and uh, five of them are school-based. So most of our classrooms are in the community, so we are a very collaborative program. Our 15 community sites include Head Start, a Montessori school, we have two parochial schools, two nursery schools, and nine daycare centers. So we have a wide variety of groups who are involved in our programming. We have a mission and vision of all four-year-old children in the school district of Janesville having access to high-quality early learning experiences throughout the community. Four-year-olds will be healthy, happy, and curious as they experience opportunities to develop fully. So our district has had the opportunity to partner with the library. We have quite a few um, family events in our community. We have to do a total of 87 and a half hours of parent involvement activities. And so we have lots of different parent activities throughout the community that we invite the library staff to attend. And the giraffe you see in the pictures is the library, the Hepburn Public Library's mascot, Mosey. And Mosey is well known among our four-year-old kindergartners in Janesville. Mosey comes to our family events that are not held at the library, and um, other staff members do as well. So the staff members have been able to share information about a thousand books before kindergarten with our families at these events. Also, eight of our P4J school district staff members attended the workshop with Dr. Nazaria. So we try to stay connected on a lot of different levels. Um, in addition, we have pizzerias. We have P4J pizzerias that were created by the library to partner with our P4J program. And we invite families and children and their families to come to these events. They bring many family members, so it's not just the four-year-old kindergarten child and their parents. And we have an excellent turnout. As of right now, we are offering four of these per school year to make sure we cover all of the different 20 sites that we have and make sure all families have an opportunity to attend the event. The pizzerias are an early literacy-based program that the library is offering to our families that um, gives them an opportunity to understand how literacy is part of their children's lives. And also we've been able to introduce families to the 1,000 Books Before Kindergarten at those events as well. In addition, at those events, they are held at the library, so those families are able to open a library card, they are able to check out books, if they already have one, and if they have a fine or they have some reason why they haven't been able, their library card's not working anymore, they are able to get that um, modified so that they're able to start checking out books again. So it's a very win-win situation for our families as well as for the library. Thanks, Angela. I'd also like to comment about the pizzerias. They're called Pizzeria and Play Zone. And the idea behind them is that 
children will move from activity to activity without realizing that they're learning something. And they're based on the five practices of early literacy, talking, singing, reading, writing, and playing. And um, we really, when we first developed this, we thought we knew how we should be doing it. And then we talked to our P4J partners and realized that we didn't know as much about early learning as we thought we did. And so working together, we really have come up with activities that are very well grounded in the Wisconsin model early learning standards and in best practices for um, early learning for preschool children. So thank you very much for that. We couldn't do it without our partners. And now I'd like to introduce Dr. Sally McCoy. Sally and I met at the Rock County Early Childhood Community Partnership meeting in May of 2013. And she has continued to guide our progress toward a community of practice around early literacy. I'm pleased to have Dr. McCoy with us today to highlight the ways that books and reading foster good mental health for our youngest library customers. Thank you. <clears throat> I'd like to talk a little bit about how I got involved in this project. And it brought together several different connections that are important to me with books. To let you know my background, I am a child psychologist who has specialized in social emotional development of very young children, a field called infant mental health. Um, infant mental health has a definition according to Zero to Three, a national interdisciplinary nonprofit focused on baby and toddler well-being that has three components. And that is the ability to express and regulate a range of emotions, the ability to form and maintain deep bonds with caregivers, and the ability to explore and learn. Babies, toddlers, and young children can be assisted in these efforts by having a reading caregiver. Books can help in understanding and managing emotions like surprise, excitement, joy, and sadness. The beginning, middle, and end of a story helps set a rhythm that even a baby can imitate. It can say, I can feel big feelings and let big feelings go. All gone. Bye-bye. Sitting with a book on a caregiver's lap provides a bonding experience, a wonderful mix of sensory experiences, the thump of the heartbeat, the pattern of breath, the warmth and smell of a body, the rumble of voice to the chest wall, the cuddle of arms around the child. All these sensations help form a bond that speaks deeply to the child's learning of what it means to be part of the human family. And of course, we think of books encouraging young children to explore and learn, whether it is learning the names for the pictures in a book or seeing how holding a wet book feels different than holding a dry book. When parents read to a child, it is like giving the child social-emotional development a vitamin pill, a daily dose of boost their self-esteem. So that is one connection between my work and libraries. I am a member of, yes, Youth Emotional Stability in Rock County a grassroots volunteer organization focused on raising awareness of children's mental health in Rock County. Our membership is comprised of early interventionists, of school staff, 
mental health workers, human services staff, and others. It's a very fluid membership, but we have a lot of stability, and we have been meeting since 2005. We are often looking for ways to bring attention to children's mental health, which leads me to our next connection. <clears throat> I am the mental health consultant for the Comprehensive Home Visiting Grant, which has the mission of reducing infant mortality in the African American population in Beloit by providing support and education with home visiting. Mothers in the program have many risk factors, increase, including deep poverty and one of the highest infant mortality rates in the United States. We have a grant advisory board, which is comprised of local leaders in the Beloit African American community. And this advisory board has sponsored a Healthy Black Family Day to celebrate ways that all Beloit families can use resources to build strength and community connections. This year, I asked if yes, would make a donation to the Healthy Black Families Day event to support the event and demonstrate their interest in the mental health of black children. Yes contributed $200 to the event and specified that it should be used to benefit as many children as possible, such as free books on self-esteem and family connections. And because I had been at the kickoff of the Arrowhead Systems 1,000 Books Before Kindergarten, I knew that the library was very interested in expanding this program to reach out to people who might not use library services regularly. I felt that the mothers in the Comprehensive Home Visiting Grant would be wonderful candidates for learning about the 1,000 books and that Healthy Black Family Day would be a great opportunity for the library to do outreach. So I asked the public relations contact at Arrowhead if they would match the YES grant, and within hours, they said yes. So we had $400 to buy books focused on self-esteem and relationships for children of color. I had a committee of three African-American teachers in early um, elementary schools who helped me look through many books online, and we generated a list that we thought might have possibilities. Um, Sharon used her extensive knowledge of cultural diversity and library resources to flesh out this list of books by black authors and illustrators. Some were by persons well known for film success, such as Spike Lee and Will Smith. Some were Coretta Scott King award winners, and all for the four children below third grade, many of them were board books for preschoolers, so they were very durable. The event was a big success. Um, Arrowhead Systems sent three staff members to the Healthy Black Family Day event with a display for a thousand books, with a game to attract children to the table, and the free books. We had arranged for a lawn tent to be behind the table with rockers and foam pads for seating to invite families to gather to look at the new books. Children were very happy to see what was available and proudly displayed their books. One girl about seven had many barrettes in her hair. She picked a book called I Love My Hair. Sharon told her, this is just the right book for you. The get girl then moved to my table where I was hosting the Yes display, and she showed me her book. I said, this is just the right book for you, not even knowing it was exactly what another adult had said. The girl's big smile was a great reward for me. Another lovely experience was sitting down with a four-year-old boy to see his book, Pretty Brown Face, which shows a daddy teaching his little boy about body parts. The last page is a mirror, and of course, the question is, who's that? 
And the little one at my side giggled and said, that's me, with the subtext being, I have a pretty brown face too. Messages about self-esteem and connection were up with others were zipping around that day. The retired teacher who was on my committee said to me, people are very impressed, which I think endorsed our efforts at outreach. We gave a set of each book to the church which sponsored the event by donating their facilities. They provide homeless shelter for families one week a month, so these books can be used both by church members and those guests, another way of expanding outreach. I was more than compensated for my volunteer hours by the reward of seeing how books can work their magic. Books can teach about emotions, can strengthen relationships, and expand learning, all components of social emotional development and infant mental health and the connection forged between the African American community and the library is an ex excellent start for collaboration. I'm going to turn this over to Sharon. Thank you so much, Nellie. Um, <clears throat> I have to say that we've benefited so much from collaborating with you and learning about how to work with families in deep poverty and how to overcome some of the issues that they may be having, and we really look forward to continuing this collaboration. And now I'd like to introduce Sue Stein, the Executive Director of Nutrition and Health Associates, Incorporated. I met Sue at a gathering of nonprofit agencies for a lunch and a training, and she stood up and said she was looking for board members. <laughs> and um, Nutrition and Health Associates is the group that administers the WIC program in Rock County. And it's near and dear to my heart because my granddaughter and daughter made use of it when my granddaughter was a baby. And I've always felt like I should give something back to them. And so working with Sue has made me feel like that's something I can do. Um, WIC and NHA have become really strong supporters of our 1,000 Books Before Kindergarten program. And they're helping with information distribution to all of their WIC clients, which is something that would have been very difficult for us in Rock County to do if it weren't for this partnership. So now Sue is going to describe a bit about how the WIC offices are integrating books and reading into their program. Well, good afternoon. Um, Nutrition and Health Associates is a nonprofit agency in Rock County. And our Rock County WIC program is obviously our largest program. We serve over 5,300 participants, moms, moms-to-be, and children. And over 4,000 of our, of our uh, program members are under the age of five. So we have a very strong uh, audience for this type of programming. We've been really fortunate. We live in a county that when Connie talked about a community of practice, if we talk about collaboration, we're very fortunate in Rock County that many, many agencies who share a similar audience are very eager to enhance their own service delivery, delivery but also enrich the lives of the families we serve. So I think that when we have the opportunity to, to work together, we're all very eager to share, to share that. Nutrition and Health Associates has also always had an environment to enrich our families. We don't look at just nutrition and health as, as our main focus. We also look at the different pieces that go into building a healthy family and a healthy child. We've always had a passive environment for many years, we've had books. We've certainly tried to engage our families, but it was just having books in the waiting room. We had magazines in the waiting room. We knew that it was something that would make time pass faster. 
So we um, enjoyed that. But what we saw is when moms and dads were reading to their kids, all the kids would start to gather around. And we thought, well, let's talk to the library and see if we can get some involvement with the LAPSIT program, having someone come in and read to the kids. What has come out of that is that it offered an opportunity for the library staff to work with our families to share the programs of the library, to promote the 1,000 books before kindergarten, and to expose them to a more dynamic style of reading than perhaps, or perhaps model a more dynamic style of reading. We then, about a year, well, last year, thought, well, let's start using books as part of our education process. So we started having, um, when we were doing the reading, we started doing um, more physical activities. There's a book called Head, Shoulders, Knees, and Toes. And um, there's some books where there's some stirring and throwing vegetables into the pot. And we started to add a little bit of that to our, to our repertoire. And then um, some of the books we started using to do as actual education. We started a group education program for our two to three year olds using the whole grain choo-choo train, um, eating the alphabet, apples and pumpkins, and my very first book of food to expose kids to fruits and vegetables, to expose families to utilizing the lessons that we were talking about in nutrition as part of their um, daily life. And also, our goal is to actually have more fruit and vegetable consumption in the home. So it's, it's been a, a very active program and a very well received program in our office. The American Academy of Pediatrics issued a policy statement that recommended reading aloud to the kids daily. So we were really excited that this was something we were already doing. And I really encourage partnerships with our WIC clinics. Um, if you are looking for community partners, as the poll that we um, took showed, WIC is a wonderful um, clinic to get involved in. We have, we're serving a lot of kids. Um, so you have kind of a, a set audience. You have staff that are always looking for ways to enrich the lives of the families we serve. So I would highly recommend you um, contact your local WIC office. Our partnership has allowed us to give away over 500 books, um, developmentally appropriate for the kids we serve. We'd also encourage us to use different options to support reading and incorporate those efforts as part of our nutrition education. Our LAPSIT program, our promotion of 1,000 um, books before kindergarten, our collaborative um, partnership with the head of the library has been a real benefit to our program. And I know that it's been very much appreciated both by staff and families. So I'll turn it back over to you. Thanks very much, Sue. Um, it's been really wonderful to work with these partners. We as librarians feel that we have gained as much or more than we have been able to give out. And um, I would still love to hear what's happening at your libraries and why you were interested in this webinar. And I will now turn it back to Tessa. Thanks so much, Sharon. And certainly this would be a great opportunity for those who are still in the room to add their thoughts in the chat, whether it was just one thing in particular that resonated with you or something that you are doing in your community or hope to try in your community. Um, we would really like to, to hear that. I also know that a lot of our uh, viewers of this webinar will come later watching the recording. And so if you are viewing this at a later time, still continue to, to be in touch either with me or Sharon Grover directly. We'd love to hear from you. Um, 
So if there are any questions um, or comments or thoughts, please put those in the chat again. Um, it's on the lower left, and it should be the tab that says the room, so then the whole group can see your questions. Um, while those thoughts are coming in, I do just want to thank you for joining us for this presentation as part of the Growing Wisconsin Readers Fall Webinar Series. And if you want more information about early literacy, about reminders for other uh, presentations in this fall webinar series, or really anything related to public libraries and early literacy in Wisconsin, I urge you to follow the Growing Wisconsin Readers blog. And the URL to that blog is listed below. It's just blog.growingwisconsinreaders.org. And that's where you'll find a lot of fresh information about what's happening in our state. Lastly, I want to leave you with a reminder for the last three webinars in our series. We have one next Tuesday, which is called Looking Closer at Family Literacy. And then we have two in the month of December, one all about 1,000 Books Before Kindergarten programs in Wisconsin, and early literacy activity areas in public library spaces. So again, all of the webinars will be hosted at the same link that brought you here today. They are held live. All of them will be recorded. And they are all free. No registration is required. So just click the link and join us. Or you can also watch the recording after it is posted on the Youth and Special Services webpage under professional development. So with that, um, again, if there are any questions that come up, we'd love to hear from you. And you can put those in the chat or um, just let us know. Um, I want to personally thank the panel for putting this together. Um, your efforts are really just up, should be applauded. You, you, you can't see me, but I'm grinning. And I'm just so pleased with all of the different inroads and connections that have been made. And I thank you for sharing not only the, the good things that have come from your efforts, but also talking about how the efforts even came to be, how you found each other, what works in terms of communicating, and, and all of those kinds of crisscrossing efforts. Those are just really important because we know um, every community has its own um, issues and partners available, but essentially it's all about relationships. And the fact that you are all in the same room right now and put this webinar together um, is, is just really wonderful. So thank you from the Department of Public Instruction for sharing your story today on our Partnership Spotlight, Rock County, Wisconsin.